Hello and welcome to my triangle intersection tutorial for JavaScript and HTML5 canvases. As usual, we've got a keys pressed object, we've got the code that sets up the canvas itself, we've got a rectangle class, a circle class, which I've built the control function for, a circle, and an interval where we draw and control that circle. Now, that circle is just uh, something I built preemptively because we don't need to go over that, but uh, let's get started making that triangle. So, show your class, and we're going to call it triangle. And we're going to give it a constructor, and we're going to take quite a few arguments probably. Uh, let's start with an X and Y, and a color, and I'm not sure what the equivalent is for triangles. Uh, let's call it length. It's like radius. Um, this dot X equals X. This dot Y equals Y. This dot color equals color. And this dot length equals length. So what we're going to want to do effectively is calculate the coordinate points of the three corners of the triangle. And given an x, y, and length, we can arbitrarily define those. So let's say uh, this dot x1 equals uh, this dot x plus this dot length. Yep. And we're going to have x2 be minus. And we're going to have this dot tip equals this dot y minus this dot length. Now, these are arbitrary. We can alter these at any time, and we can have arguments that alter these, and I'll probably get around to that, but let's let's try to draw what we've got so far. Uh, so triangles don't have a primitive method like arc or fill rect, so we're basically going to have to build on ourselves. Uh, we're going to start with a tutorial canvas context dot move to uh, this dot x, this dot y, and we're going to actually want another one of those because we're going to, oop, we're going to close this with the same starting and end point, so if we filled it, it would fill up. Uh, and we're going to say x1 And x2 and we're gonna set the stroke style it is this our color and the stroke width oops. we're gonna set it to three we can make that an argument but I'm just gonna make it three for now and we're gonna let that triangle come into existence and we want this put it the center or roughly the center and let's say it's yellow yellow is a very triangular color and I'm gonna give it a length of 40 so now we're gonna draw that nope something's wrong ah I forgot to say stroke All right, so here we have, this is our arbitrary triangle. It's, uh, you know, not equilateral. It's, uh, I guess you, it's probably a right triangle actually, but, uh, you know, it doesn't really make a difference because the collision method we're gonna be drawing or designing, that is, um, is actually gonna use these coordinate points as the guide. And those coordinate points are gonna be, so if, if for instance, I change this, I uh, made this two. Now we have a different triangle. But uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a method called is point inside. And we're gonna give that a point, which could be anything with an x and y coordinate, but uh, basically we're gonna take that point and we're gonna say if point dot x is uh, less than this dot x1. We go on to the next check and if dot 
point dot y is greater than this dot tip. And if this dot, oops, sorry, if point dot y is less than this dot y, go to the next check, and if this, if point dot x is greater than this dot x2, go to the next check, okay. So now what we've done is, we're gonna um, return true in that case. We're not done here, but for now we're gonna return true and we're gonna return false otherwise. And we're gonna go ahead and say uh, if uh, triangle dot is point inside point, which is what I named the circle, uh, then we're gonna say point dot radius equals six else point dot radius equals two. All right, so let's see if that works. Now it should, when we go inside a rectangle that basically defines the, so you see here, if I go above the top, it doesn't find it. Below the bottom, doesn't find it. Inside, it does find it, but it also finds it in these, these, these triangular areas that are basically describing a rectangle around this object. So what we're gonna have to do is uh, narrow it down, basically. And the way we're gonna do that is by building these uh, basically criterion. So let's say this dot except one equals, um, all right, that'll be uh, this dot tip, no, this dot y minus this dot tip, because we can change this arbitrarily and it'll change here as well, uh, divided by this dot x1 minus this dot x, and we're going to make the same thing for x2 and call it except 2. Now these values, they're going to relate to um, uh, some properties of the point, basically. So if we say uh, let, well, I'm making class variables, it doesn't really matter. They're not going to get used anywhere else, but this dot um, base x equals I'm going to borrow this code actually just for formatting sake. And instead of x2, this will be point dot x. All right. And y. Ah, you know what? This is wrong. This should be this dot point dot y minus this dot tip for base y and base x should be this, this dot point dot x minus this dot x. Okay, so then we're gonna say this dot slope equals this dot base y divided by this dot base x. And I'm gonna say if this dot slope is now I'm not entirely sure which one's which in terms of the expressions they evaluate to, but let's, let's try one and see if it's the right one. This dot slope is less than or equal to this dot except one and else if. Take this, put in each of these, and hopefully that should clip it. Okay, they're flipped, so we gotta flip those. Alright, and oh, that didn't work either. Alright, well, let's uh, let's log that and see what we get. Hopefully they're at least in similar units. So we can find that out just by adding a console log and going in there. Okay, so what we got is some kind of property error. So 
Ah, these are not this dot point. That's why. All right, there we go. So now it does uh, show that it's colliding inside the circle. Or I'm sorry, the circle is colliding inside the triangle. And it goes right up to the edge in in these locations. Uh, it, 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 since it's uh, greater or equal or less than or equal, it does count exactly on the line. But just outside, it does not. So uh, to illustrate that this is kind of flexible, let's go ahead and make this times 2 and this times 6, for example. And we'll have a weird triangle. All right. And in here collides out here does not out here does not down here no um, now the limitation of this is the way this is designed it's effectively checking the uh, the angle between the tip and uh, the tip and and X so like basically this point and the point the circles in so it more or less requires a flat bottomed triangle where uh, the top point is within actually you know what it might not need to be within so let, let's say uh this is minus as well Ooh, interesting well the collision is working kind of no 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 it does not okay well worth noting then uh this type of method works with a triangle of roughly this form if we did something like uh hmm well, we'd, you know, there'd be actually quite a bit of work involved in altering this in a way that it, that it would have like one side down here. But a way that that might be remedied is with the tutorial context, or let's say if we use the tutorial canvas, canvas context and rotate uh, math dot pi slash two, for instance. Now, this is probably gonna break it or it'll be spinning or something. Okay, so that broke it. Um, let's just do that once and see what we get. Nope. All right, well, uh, I'm gonna leave that alone. Uh, effectively though, what we have here is a way in which you can get a general collision set for a triangle of this form, which whether or not you find that to be valuable, it depends on your use case. I think something like this could be very useful. For instance, if we set the coordinate point of the triangle to 700, and now it's on the ground, and it will ground in a, in a sense anyway. So now it, it does show that I'm uh, colliding with it still. It's, its movement, its position doesn't actually affect that. So let's turn off that console log and just for, just for to save the processing. And we're going to go into the circle method. No, nope, you know what? We're going to go into the, uh, the, uh, this right here. I'm going to say, uh, point dot y plus equals one. Put that here. Oh, I'm sorry. It should be minus. And what's going to happen now is it's kind of going to force the circle out. So if I go down here and if I just press D to go sideways, it kind of follows it like a ramp. Now it doesn't. It's not doing it exactly, and it's a very uh, lazy heuristic. But something like this, you can set up something kind of like a ramp, and uh, you could even go so far as to say uh, the y momentum is changed by some small amount. And we are not currently calling the circle move function, but if we say uh, point dot draw is now also point dot move. And we got, if I go down here, now what I expect is probably going to fling the circle up into the air and I'm not going to be able to get it back. Oh, it happens kind of slowly, but yeah, it's floating away. Uh, so with a bit, a bit of tinkering, you could set this up and, uh, you know, I mean, even so much so if I say point dot y mom, which is the y momentum plus equals, so point uh, zero five, so half as much, and it's just going to be falling. And when it reaches that triangle, it should stop, basically. Oh, interesting. Oh, you know what? Of course it's not going to stop. It's got so much momentum coming from being up there so high. So let, let's put this at 
six. No, I'm sorry, uh, this one at six fifty. Now it kind of floats on that. Again, kind of need some tinkering. With enough tinkering, it's quite possible to create a functional ramp system just from that type of triangular collision. Uh, you know, there's a lot of other things you could do with, uh, you know, enough basic manipulation of uh, this. You could also, uh, you know, add more checks and create a more complex method that takes into account um, whether, say, that, uh, well, like if uh, this leg was like down here and this leg was up here, then you would still be able to find the collision for that area if you're uh, kind of savvy and rotate the canvas or use a trigonometric function to determine the relative position to whatever point you set. So like uh, with more arguments as well, you could set up more arguments and more class values that you could use to analyze the triangle. But just for, for what I'm trying to demonstrate, it's basically what I'm trying to say. You've got triangular collision to an extent. And uh, thank you. I'm, I'm just going to demo some triangle things right now. All right, so here we have a cart style uh, game, kind of. And here you can see that the triangle, it's got the interactiveness with basically the wheels. Uh, they use ray casting to uh, determine where the surface is. And then the rays themselves repel the center of the ray casting object away from the object that it's interacting with. So uh, using a triangle, I mean, you know, the thing is, if your triangle goes off the bottom, you don't have to worry about it being irregular. You only are really working with two sides. So, you know, do with it what you will. Um, another one is, so here we have a, uh, you know, a ray casting object, uh, which has the uh, triangle pushed into its obstacles. And the triangle has the is point inside function set to be checked for each ray. So when we move it into, um, alignment, we can see that the triangle actually does cast, uh, well, not a triangular shadow, but the type of shadow that a triangle should be casting. And uh, thank you for watching my video. Uh, if you liked it, let me know. If you have a question, leave a comment. Thank you very much.